Minister Brenda Jordan, to our mother and all of you, my sisters and brothers, deacons and deaconess in, in Christ. It is good to stand before you today to proclaim the gospel. And I must tell you, we're, we're living in some trying times. Second Timothy 3 says, it's perilous time. Mm. Well, well, man love serving the Christian more than the creator. Sure we're all about this mess of the world yeah, and forget about doing what God wants to do. And that's simply what? Love you one another. God wants us to be a what? A family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God loves us so much that he created us in what? His image. That we can love one another. And then when we had so all the all the, the, the wrongdoing in the world, he sent his son. In fact, he manifests himself into the flesh to come here and be that example before us. To show us how we can live in this world as one in Jesus Christ. But most people don't want to live in Jesus Christ. They want to live in themselves. Yeah, but I come by to tell you, there's only one shepherd. And we all should acknowledge because one day, every knee must bow. And every tongue shall confess. So you confess Jesus today. So when he comes, you won't have to worry about that. Amen? Amen. Let's look at one of the most familiar passages in the Bible. It has been quoted by more theologians, more preachers, more human beings in the world than any other pastor. That is Psalms 23. <laughs> Psalms 23. Psalms 23, the most quoted passage in the world. But a lot of people say it, but don't mean it in their heart. It's just like Isaiah said, Isaiah 29. You come to me with your lip service, but your heart is far from it. Amen? Amen? Psalms 23. And when you have it, stand to your feet and say amen. 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 Everybody got it? Amen. I want everybody to see it for themselves. Psalms 23. Psalms 23 in its entirety. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, be comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You may take your seat. We're going to speak to you for a few minutes today on a subject no matter what, <coughs> follow Jesus. Oh God. No matter what, follow Jesus. We look at all the things that is happening in the world and we, we allow these things to play with our mind. And, and when it plays with our mind, we start getting all upset and worried and start doubting God. God did not create us to worry or fear. But he created us what? 
to worship him. And how do we worship him? It's by being obedient unto his word. Now, if you don't understand what I mean, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And you know what? By you having faith in that, all righteousness comes to your good. By your faith. By our father Abraham. Abraham at the time, he put his faith by his faith of being obedient to God. It was counted to him for righteousness. So what that means, when you have faith in God, then all that other mess around you start coming off. You, you don't have no fear. You don't have no lying. You don't have no cheating, no stealing, no backbiting, scheming, and deny, denying. You know that God is what? Leading you. And see, I, I can picture King David right now. When he wrote this 23rd Psalm, I can imagine he was up in his age, up in the age, because he had gone through some things. Oh, wow. uh, he, had, he had run from Saul, who was trying to what? Kill him. But God protected David. He allowed David to have the opportunity to kill Saul. But he said, touch not my anointed. So King Saul was anointed by God at the time. David was obedient and didn't kill him. So all the things that David went through, he still would seek after God's heart. And we all are going through something, but you need to seek after the heart of what? Of God. Amen. By having faith. Now look at this story there, sir. It seems God, we will see that God is a caring shepherd. And in the opinion of a God, he will guide you through any and every situation that comes up in your life. Yes. We must follow God and obey his command. But a lot of us want to follow the commands. First of all, with self. Amen. Second of all, with wife. Yes. Second of all, with, third of all, with husband. Fourth of all, with children. Yes. But I come by to tell you, each one of us got to have a personal yes. relationship. Yes. See, my mother is dead and gone, so I can't live of the relationship that she had with Jesus. That's right. I know that she had a relationship, so that's why I don't worry about her. I will see her again. But you got to have faith and trust in the Lord. Trust in what, what he said. Yes, he and he said, he is always be what? With you. Always be always. with you. And always. And now look at this, this first verse. Because God is our only hope of eternal life and secure. Look what Jesus, uh, David wrote here. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, how did David write that? I'm glad you asked. If you look at 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, about the 10th and 11th verse, you will see that Samuel was sent by God to the house of Jesse. To anoint one of his sons. Mm -hmm. But see, uh, Jesse had a bunch of sons. And after seven of the sons passed by Samuel, the oil had started the war. Samuel said, Oh, uh, surely you must have another son. And, 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 and God said, Yes. I mean, and Jesse said, Yes, I have another one. But he is tender. And good looking. He's a fair good looking out there tending the sheep. <laughs> if y'all know the story of David, David fought off the bear, fought off the lion with his staff. So David knew something about being what? A shepherd. But he also knew the shepherd. The one and only Lord. That's why he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Because God had guided him through all the situations of his life. With Saul, with the Philistines, with all those that were trying to kill him, with all those that were trying to do Israel in. But God led him. He followed the spirit of the Lord. And he said, I shall not want. <laughs> what do want mean? Want mean your father already knows what you need. You can check that out in Matthew 6, chapter, verse 18. 
Verse 8. Jesus says he knows what you already what need. And if you check out Matthew 6, verse 32, he said, These things the heathens seek after. But your father in heaven, but in order for him to be your father in heaven, he gotta be your what? Shepherd. Your father in heaven already know what you need. God know what you need before you even what? Ask. But he says, seek ye first, the third, third verse, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. But see, in this world, we, we seek women with lust. We seek men with lust instead of seeking with the heart of Jesus Christ. And that. end up getting to something that is not good for us. We, we seek money. But put that in our God and end up losing everything and wounding everything. Amen. Amen? Amen. They say, he makes me to lie down in a green pasture. Now, what do you mean? If you follow Jesus, he's going to make sure you have everything that you need. Philippians 4, 19, he said, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So when you got Jesus, he is the light of your life, and he leads you through everything. He will make, lead you in the land of prison. He will lead you in the land of prison. Uh, Psalm 25 and verse 5, Lord, lead me in the truth and teach me all things. When you turn yourself over to the Lord and let him have his way, my sisters and brothers, that is a day that you won't walk around with a smile on your face. Yeah, say it. You might come up to a point you're going to frown, yeah, see it. but when you get yeah, frowning and angry, <laughs> say not. Just trust yeah, in the Lord. Mm. He leads me beside the still waters. I understand why David said that. Because David was a shepherd. He used to lead the sheep. And he would take the sheep out to the sea to drink water. Mm -hmm. But the sheep were timid animals. <laughs> the waves come in and roar, and guess what the sheep would do? The sheep would run from the water because of the noise of the water. So therefore they didn't get anything to drink. And when they were walking through the desert, what happened to the sheep? They would die. But David dug a pool off from them, from the water, and dug a trench to that pool. So when the wave came in, the water would run in the trench to the pool. And the pool was called still water. God does the same thing for you today. When you trust in him and lean not to your own understanding, he will guide your path and everything that you need to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? It says, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, he restored my soul. He did it what? For himself. He showed you that he's God and give you the, the assurance that he's what? There for you. Uh, 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 Hebrews 11 and 1 said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By and the second verse says, by it, by the, by it, by faith, the elders receive a good report. All you have to look at Daniel 3, and you see the good report that the Hebrew boys received. By trusting in the Lord. They walked around and ran in the fire and and came out. My Lord. With no smoke. Nobody but God. Hello? Amen. But you got to have faith. And trust in the Lord, and he will restore your soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. <laughs> righteousness. Isaiah 54 and 14 says, in, in righteousness, you shall be what? Established. And no oppression, no fear, no terror shall come near thee. By me, says the Lord. Oh, but he said, they shall gather together against you. 
them, but not by him. He wants you to remember that he made everything. He made the smith and the blower and the destroyer himself. That's it. But he said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. If you just, no matter what, Say that. just follow Jesus. Say that. No matter what, <coughs> just follow Jesus. He said, now, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You see, if, if you know the story in Genesis 5 and look at about 24th verse, you will see that Enoch <laughs> walked with God. Yes, he did. And, and, and his walking, Enoch did not see death. If you walk with God, you will not see death. I ain't talking about this physical death. The spiritual death that you have going in your life right now, where well, ain't nothing going right for you. Yeah, Lord. But you must walk with the Lord. You must walk with the Lord. He said now, out in the valley, uh, Psalms 138 and 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, God will revile me. You know what I mean? You walk like you're walking among the fire, but you won't get burned. Say that. Help, because God is going to what? Bring you through. Yes, he He's going to revile, but you must believe and follow him. Amen. No matter what, follow Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 He said now, and I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. See, we worry about death. <laughs> but 2 Chronicles 15 and 13 said that whosoever would not seek the Lord shall be put to death. <laughs> Small, great, male, or female. So what it said, if you don't have trust in the Lord, you can be put to death. This God loves you, but he wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. He'll lead you to any problem that you have in the land. And he said, now, and thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. You know what the rod and staff is? Look at Revelation 3 and verse 19. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase them. See, when you get spanked, you need to be giving God the glory. Thank you, Lord, for spanking me. Thank you, Lord, for my troubles. For opening my eyes so I can see the right way. The rod was to fight off the, the animals, but the staff was to use to keep you and I in line. Oh. That's why he said in uh, Romans 8 28, all things work together to the good of those that love the Lord, to whom are called according to his purpose. And we are called, but a few are chosen. Are you following Jesus today? Are you living the life that Jesus wants you to live? Are you doing your own thing because I know what I'm doing? And this is my life. But I come by to tell you, your life is not yours. Amen. It belongs to God. Amen. And when God gets ready to pluck you out, guess what? He will pluck you out. And you will go and be judged according to what your work be. So if you're down here doing the things of the world, yep. he will tell you to get in line with the ghost. Hello? He said, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Did y'all know what a table is? You know, I don't know if you know it, but when my enemies are all around me, Jesus prepares the table for me. And the first thing on that table is love. <laughs> I look up and say to myself, you just don't know if I used, if I was the way I used to be. <laughs> but because of the love that I have for you. And then he gives me joy in serving him. Hello? He, he gives me love and joy and gives me peace in every situation. This is my life. And then he gives me long suffering that I, I be patient not only with you, but also with who? Myself. Yeah, and he, he teaches me how to be gentle. Yeah. 
But it also teaches me how to be bold. And stand on his word. And it teaches me to, to be good, have goodness towards other people. And most of all, he teaches me to, have a, to be faithful to him. And in my faithfulness, he has control. You see, when you got the table, on the table, the fruit of the spirit, you will dance through the tulips just like Tiny Tim did. Those of you that are old enough to know who Tiny Tim was. And he said, Thou anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. John, 1 John 2 and 27. Ye have any man to teach you. You don't have to have any man to teach you. When you are anointed by the Spirit of the Lord, He will guide you in everything. That you do. All right. And you see, I was telling you the story in 1 Samuel about David. Mm -hmm. David was being anointed by God. And when you're anointed by God, the uh, Job, the, uh, Psalm 15 and verse 5 tells us, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. See, you don't know who God has anointed around you. So that's why it's important for you to what? Love everybody. Amen. He said that, and my cup <laughs> runs over. You see, when God blesses you with this anointing, it is not for you to keep to yourself. He blesses you in order to bless others. See, he told my father Abram in Genesis 12 to get out of his own country, get out of his father's house, get out, get, get out among his kindred, and go to a place that he showed him. And he said, I will make you a great nation, and you will bless many nations. He said, I will curse those that curse you, right. and bless those that bless you. See, I don't worry because you get upset with me. Because, see, it's not my battle. It's the battle of the Lord. And he said he will curse them that curse me. And he said, now surely, and surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, our peace, Ephesians 2 and verse 14, he is our peace. And who he that I'm talking about is none other than Jesus Christ. But I like the way John uh, summed it up. In the scripture that Mark read today, John the 15th chapter, starting at verse 1. Yeah, Jesus says, I am the true vine. Ah, uh, you see, a vine is a holistic uh, a plant that brings much fruit. And he says, My father is the husband, but he that produces not fruit <laughs> is taken away. If you are still out here lying, cheating, backbiting, and doing the things of the world, you're already cut off from the vine. And when you get cut off from the vine, you get no nourishment. But he said, he that he pruneth, he that he see is trying to produce and do what's right. right. He prunes you so you can bring forth much more fruit. You are clean by the word. So I'm coming to tell you, get to know the word for yourself. And because Jesus is coming back one day, and when he comes back, he's coming back for a perfect church. I ain't talking about he's coming back for this building. He's coming back for you, you, and me. And whatever you want me, that's the reward that you're going to get. But what I love about it in John the 15th, the 7th verse, he says, abide in me, and let my word abide in you. And whatsoever you ask shall be done unto you. The one I'm talking about, let him be your shepherd. His name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he came down to 42 generations. He walked on this earth for 33 long years. 
He taught for three years, teaching us how to love one another. Yep. The Bible says that the light came to the darkness, but the darkness comprehended the night. He came to his own, but his own did not recognize him. Ah, uh, but I come by to tell you, when he was walking into Jerusalem on a Friday evening, riding on a donkey, the Bible says they were throwing down their clothes and the palm trees and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. They was praising him because they knew he was the Messiah. I but I come by to tell you, don't be like those same people that next Thursday evening they were saying, crucify him, crucify him. The Bible said they went and got my father uh, in the garden of Gethsemane, okay. and they brought him to Caiaphas house, who was the high priest of all the religious leaders. See, a lot of people are religious, but they don't know Jesus. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And the Bible said they beat him, and they spit up on him, and they did all things to him. But my daddy didn't say a the word. They marched him from there over to Pilate's house, and Pilate questioned him and said, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus looked at him and said, You said it. <laughs> you know, when you know what you know, you don't have to say much. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And Pilate said, I can't find no wrong in this man. I'm going to wash my hands of him. But you know that we give uh, freedom to one prisoner every year. We got two prisoners here. We got this man, Jesus. And this man Barabbas, and who do you choose? Oh, oh they, they were just like a lot of us today. We choose the way of the world and said, give us Barabbas. Barabbas was a murderer. He was a cheater. He was a backbiter. He was a slider. They chose him. And they took my father back to Cat's house. They spit him on him. They beat him all night, Friday night. They put a crown of thrones on his head. The Bible said the blood ran down his back. And they paraded him through the streets of Jerusalem early that Friday morning with an old cross on his shoulder. Headed him up to uh, uh, Gathasa Hill. The Bible says he fell down, but for your sakes, and my sake. He got up again. And he made it up to carry him. And he laid down his life. He allowed the man that he loved so much to put nails in his hand, nails in his feet. And they stretched him wide and they hung him high. The Bible says Jesus stayed on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. But before he gave up the ghost, he looked down and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. They pierced him in the side, and out came blood and water. They took him down off the old cross, and they put him in the barber tomb. The Bible says he stayed there all night Friday night. He stayed there all night Saturday night. Saturday. He stayed there. All night, Saturday night, but early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Yes. And that power is here for you today. No matter what, let yes. Jesus lead you. There might be somebody here today that don't know this man Jesus.